So, hello everyone. I am Woman Feeding Master Adriana from Moscow. I would be moderating this session today. Thank you to everyone of you for being here with us today. We are very pleased to welcome those of you uh, that have been with us for a long time now, as well as those who are new to the Neuter community. We welcome back GM Boris on the Neuter platform with his camp favorable tension. Now for new subscribers, we would like to tell about Boris in more detail. Um, Boris became Grandmaster 25 years ago. He has won a lot of tournaments, as you see now on the screen, and he also trained with a lot of strong players in the world, like Kramni, Karana, Wesley So, and many more. Uh, Boris also is very famous uh, as one of the uh, very strong uh, open and fair reticons of the modern area. Okay, and also, uh, before we start the session, I would like to explain some do's and don'ts of the session now. Um, use chat box for answering and use uh, key Q and A box to ask the questions. Also avoid spamming the chat, avoid repeating the questions. And um, if you're unable to log in, as mentioned in our not placed on the website, we are adding functionality and content Please be here with us. You will be able to enjoy the chess content from the masters as before very soon. And also, uh, we want uh, to announce uh, that the 13th of February, uh, we will be have free camp on complex end game from the mentor GM Dever Rogic. So we would be very glad to uh, see you this day. Thank you for being here. And Boris, how are you today? We would like to hear you now. Yeah, so, so everything is good. Thanks for introduction. Uh, I, I need to start sharing the screen. Yeah, I, th th this time I was not prepared today. <laughs> um, one second. So just to make sure everything is working. I, I, I do portion of the screen, correct? Oh. It's possible all the screen, portion of the screen, correct? Yeah, yeah, already I, I'm getting sometimes confused because somewhere it's us like portion of the screen. I'm sorry about this technical delay, guys. Um, yeah, I think everything yeah. is good, I guess. Yeah, yeah, all is good now, right? Yeah, it's better. Okay, okay, guys, uh, welcome. Uh, Hello, everyone. Uh, as I always say, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, but mostly good evening for you, right? Uh, so today we just uh, continue our series of lectures uh, with the middle gate topics. Uh, guys, uh, the, the, the only thing, th those who attended our first session, I, I wanted to ask you, um, when, uh, when at some point I'm asking about the move, Maybe guys, you take some time to think, right? Because usually I'm getting the answer uh, within five seconds, I already have like 10 answers. And guys, it's not about who is first. It's not about who is first. I'm, I'm, I rather would like to see the right answer, right? So uh, when I do my private classes, I, I, I call it uh, game mode. So this is somehow helps you, uh, let's say to train the way, like to think the way you should think in the game. Uh, right and uh, you, you know how, how to train the right thinking so this is the one of the ways right like if you answer five ten seconds that means you kind of like well I can answer right now very quickly and then I can change and and so on and you kind of like aware that it's a class and you have nothing to lose right guys so I would like to encourage you I know it's not, not gonna work with everyone I still will get very quick answers but guys try to think like a little bit let's say there, there will be some, uh, you know, quite uh, quite an interesting and not an easy question. So let's say if I'll give you, let's say three minutes. Let's think three minutes, right? Take some time. Think, take some time to think. And uh, it would be just like something beneficial for you. Just an idea, right? Okay, guys. So, so today's very interesting topic. Uh, favorable tension. Uh, to be honest, I don't know whether... Uh, 
I, I, I saw or read this in any books. I don't know, maybe you can tell me, but I don't remember about this topic cover somewhere. Uh, and, uh, and, and this topic just, uh, you, you know, there, there was, it was interesting. I just noticed one game and uh, the, this topic just kind of like this idea popped up in my, like, you know, in my mind. And I thought like, hmm, that's interesting. Can I like create some lecture, create material? Obviously, I showed this to like, you know, my private students and so on. So I thought it's interesting. Uh, and we will see what we are talking about. And I can tell you it was pretty challenging. Uh, it will be pretty challenging lesson. And uh, hopefully eventually you'll understand, like you understand what, what I mean by favorable tension, right? So how it works. Uh, and what, what is important, I also wanted to mention that uh, this kind of play, it's mostly, uh, you can see in the games of strong players, right? It's like very rarely you can see like low rated players playing this kind of positions. They usually tend to release the tension. I mean, like, you know, change the pawn structure. One of the ideas, like the major one, change the pawn structure, uh, move the pawns, capture something and so on. Okay, guys, so let, let's, uh, without further delay, let's move to the game. Now, now that, that's also the interesting game. Um, it was, I'm actually very proud that I found this game. Uh, that was right after the match, uh, after World Championship match. It's it's like very fresh game uh, from January. Uh, right after World Championship match between Carlson and Nepo, uh, there was some kind of break. Like there were no big tournaments. So there was basically... Uh, time between the match and the tournament in Tata Steel. But I have this habit in the morning. I always, I have this app, follow chess. So I'm checking all other tournaments. Like I'm, I'm trying to see the tournaments where grandmasters are playing and, um, you know, to see some games, if I can find some interesting material, uh, always keep updated in the openings and stuff like that. And uh, so there was some open, uh, I, I know the name, but I even, I don't know which country. Presumably it's Italy. I don't know, like, seems like Italy, not very well-known name, but seems like a very good open uh, with a lot of, uh, like, I don't know, 20 grandmasters and then quite a few strong ones. And I noticed this game and it was interesting. So I was, uh, yes, I think Vergani, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think it's Vergani. So so here, uh, and uh, one of the games uh, drew my attention. Uh, it's the game between a very strong Ukrainian grandmaster, Korobov, Korobov, who is, uh, you know, for, for many years, around 2700. During this game, he was 26.99. And uh, he played against, uh, guys, against Indian player. Uh, I, I don't know how to spell correctly, but it seems like Bharat. So it's B-H, I think like H, I don't know. It's not spelled, I think. Bharat and uh, somebody with a rating 24.76. And, and, you know, guys, like, to be honest, so many strong players in India, but this player, I'm not, uh, I'm not familiar with this player, uh, but I, I have no doubts that he's pretty good. And so they, they were playing one of the top boards, you know, so he was doing pretty good in the tournament. But uh, of course, the, this Ukrainian player always, uh, always very like ambitious, always uh, plays for win, like no, no, like fighting, fighting guy. I, I, I really enjoy watching his games in general. Uh, got a lot of interesting ideas and materials. Okay, let's go to the game. Let's see what happened uh, in the game. So the opening started like this, guys. So it was d4, d5, c4, c6, <clears throat> knight f3, knight f3, knight f6, knight c3. So we have uh, Slav, uh, like main position of the Slav. So, you know, guys, knight f3, knight c3, probably the most challenging line in my mind. Uh, the problem is uh, the massive amount of theory here that white needs to study because black has a big choice between captured on c4 classical slav playing a6 chebanenko what kasparov used to play his last opening and and uh, of course e6 uh, you play queen b3 instead of uh, somebody's playing queen b3 is another move yeah it's another move so it's another possibility but you, you know my books Guys, my, in my books, I recommend e3. So that's another popular move. But knight c3 is the most classic, like the most ambitious, like no doubts about it. And now we have e6 and bishop g5. So as I said, you know, like uh, Ukrainian player always like, uh, you know, goes for challenging play, 
challenging lines. And now, now in this position, uh, we have choice between, you probably know the guys, there is a Botvinnik variation where DC4 is captured uh, with the, like 30 moves of theory, like here, B5, E5, H6, Bishop H4, G5, right? Like Knight takes G5. So I think like everyone knows this theory, like and so on with the theory which starts on move 25, approximately, right? So you have uh, probably the most popular nowadays, H6. By the way, Adriana is called Mos Moscow variation uh, after H6, uh, where white has a uh, choice between capturing on F6, capturing on F6 uh, with more positional play or going for Bishop H4, basically like sacrificing the pawn. So this position, I remember some 20 years ago was very, very popular, but uh, I... I I, I scored like two wins, one for black, one for white. And then I think maybe even I lost one game to strong grandmaster. And then I gave up on this line because everyone started to analyze and it was just literally a competition of computers that was impossible to play. It was just something crazy. Now, nowadays, you don't see it very often, but it's still a fascinating line. Now, for black, in this position, there is kind of like safe choice, Cambridge Springs. So we, we have... Sean Hodip, who mentioned 97. So you you know, guys, like for instance, you play this and you like you don't want to study 25 moves of theory, you have 97. So that's basically transposed into I, I call it Ke Queen's Gambit Decline, Cambridge Springs variation. Right? It's it's 97, and uh, of course, white can take already on d5, but e3 is the most ambitious move, and queen a5, right? So some tricky line, bishop b4, knight e4, there are like a few tricks. Those uh, who don't know for white can like quickly lose material here, you know, stuff like that. Uh, in general, I, I was like personally not very excited about this variation, but uh, there have been a lot of strong grandmasters, including Magnus, who, who have been playing this line. So like it's it's not that he consistently plays this, but drag games, right? So it's not nowadays I think considered to be reliable opening, reliable opening. Now uh, for white, I I personally believe that CD five that's the right moment. By the way, you know guys, releasing the tension, right? I I actually I I was not intending to talk about this moment of this topic, but now it's it's kind of like cross my mind. So we take CD five. It's uh, releasing the tension. Why? Because uh, that helps kind of like to protect the bishop. So there are these tricks where the bishop is hanging, right? Like one of the moves, let's say knight d2, and we have like dc4, uh, where we force to give up the bishop. So one of the ideas, right? So like uh, good idea to take cd5. I, I also believe that's the most uh, the most challenging move. So after cd5, now also we take advantage of the fact that basically cd5. You know, guys, with the knight on d7, there is even a rule uh, with this pawn structure. Uh, I mean, guys, just keep in mind, please. So this pawn structure, what I'm talking about, uh, like it happens a lot in different lines, right? Uh, So-called, like, my, like, well, I don't know how, how we call this pawn structure, but it could be like minority attack or something, right? So it's it's like you, you can get this for white, for black, and so on. So there is a rule. Knight comes to d7, then you can take cd5, meaning that, we are not worried about move cd5 because with the knight on d7, knight cannot come to c6, and there could be issues over c file, right? Uh, now, now e d5, which is normal, uh, the problem is that now queen, if, if we're talking about regular queen's gambit decline, like Carl's but variation, queen is misplaced on a5, nothing to do here, right? So that's why basically like this capture kind of like makes sense, makes sense, makes a lot of sense here. Knight d5, well-known, well-known first move, uh, theoretic, yes. And now uh, I think rook c1, queen d2, I'm not very much into theory with this line, but seems like both moves are very challenging, uh, fighting for advantage. In this specific game, queen d2 was played. Uh, now queen d2, so protecting on c3, right? Bishop b4 was played, rook c1, only move, right? So guys, in fact, like this pin is like not very dramatic. It's, uh, you, you know, we can easily protect, but it just gives a little bit like time for black. So black can now castle and so on. And now in this position, guys, uh, the, the Indian player, 
I, I would assume he's probably an international master. I don't know exactly. He took on C3. Now, this probably objectively, now, now GM. Okay, so even GM, guys. But yeah, I mean, he, uh, yeah, he was playing very high in this tournament. So, like, no surprise. Yeah. And not surprising that you have another GM in India. So, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, just so many GMs. Like, it's a fantastic country for the chess. No doubts about this. Guys, so we have here, like, for those who, let's say, interested maybe to, to learn a little bit this, about this line for black. If I remember correctly, the, the main line in this position uh, that is played nowadays, it's like h6, bishop h4, and something like c5. So that's probably the direction played by, like I noticed, like very strong GM. So probably here something also, like there are some games with b6. Now he played knight takes c3. So guys, by the way, we are talking about some tension here as well, right? So there is this tension uh, in the center, like, you know, knight c3, knight d5. So he took here knight c3. It looks, it looks a little bit strange. It looks a little bit strange, right? But, you know, when I saw this, I was pretty sure that this is like well-known theory. But it's appeared that it's not. It's appeared that this is like a rail line. Uh, guys, I, I wanted also to mention, uh, please, if you, have, if you want to say something, send me in the chat and I will, if I find it's useful, I will address, but you know, don't raise your hand. Like, you, you know, I see this pops up on my screen. Somebody raised hand, somebody raised hand. You know, you don't need to, I, I'm not paying attention to this, right? Like, I, I'm not accepting this. So if you have something to say, just send in the chat. So that's it. Now, Bishop A3. Now, in fact, what happened, uh, I probably uh, kind of like uh, got a little bit confused. I'm not so strong in the theory of this variation. So there is this idea. So this is what happened, guys. This is what he played. Now, in fact, it's not exactly the right place for this idea. Actually, this idea first, I remember, introduced, uh, introduced by uh, Magnus. Well, at least that was the first game that he played uh, against Boris Gelfand in one of the candidate tournaments. So there was this line, bishop i3, rook c2, and then b6. Guys, and b6 follow up, this is a very important part of the strategy. Right, so so like to get bishop a6, and actually this line nowadays very popular, seems like pretty okay results for black. I I thought that's something like a little bit strange, giving up the center and everything, but in fact there is like uh, there is a point. Uh, somebody asking me if I know uh, how quickly black played. I don't know. I don't know this. Like I I didn't check the time. Uh, now this is similar, but of course black wasted time for like move bishop before already, right? So that it's it's kind of like maybe tempo down. And it, what, was it, what was interesting, like I, I remember somebody of my students asked me like, who played this? And I'm like, well, it's not uh, that so many grandmasters, actually there are a couple grandmasters played this, but uh, there was uh, the youngest grandmaster in the world, Mishra, right? He played this. And actually what is funny, he even played this after this game. He even played this variation after the game. So he's like, and he's very good in theory, right? You probably know, guys. He's probably, uh, according to famous interview of his dad, there are some really powerful computers. So I, I always knew that he's pretty good in theory, but uh, yeah, so if he's playing, maybe there are some ideas. Now, or maybe he doesn't know this game. That's also possible, right? So he's not checking like I check in the morning. So it's kind of how to get to this game, right? Uh, okay, guys. So there is, uh, after b6, the idea is clear. What do you think? Like you, you would get this position. It's not a real question. It's just kind of like free question that kind of like just express your opinion. Uh, what, what you would do here for, uh, for white? I like, so, so here's the hint. I like a lot what uh, Ukrainian grandmaster did. And uh, he played, the move, which, which is a novelty. And uh, it still remains the only, the only game where this move was played. All the rest featured another move. So like 15 games, one moves, and he played the novelty. Let's see. If you are not guessing, I'll ask Adriana to guess. OK, so far we have one move. Oh, 
kushal, something original. Let's see, let's go. Okay. Bishop a6, no, it's white to move. Somebody is. Uh, yeah, yeah, what does it mean? Bishop d3 after bishop a6, but it's white to move. And now you need to play move, right? Okay, guys, we, we have one winner who gets the move. I'm, I, I wouldn't say that, oh, well, that's absolutely the best move in this position, but I really like it. I really like it. Uh, I think, uh, it, like, I would personally fight for advantage like that. So, uh, Julam, Julam that was the only one who mentioned this move. Guys, not surprising that the majority said Bishop D3, right? This is 15 games out of 16, including some good grandmasters. Bishop D3... Bishop a6, and here it's different, like, but mostly castle, right? Normal, normal, absolutely normal, guys. But how about, how about if, let's say, I'll ask this question. So this is what's interesting about this move. If I would ask you, would you prefer to avoid trade? I'm pretty sure everyone would say yes, right? Like trade of light square bishops. Why? Because bishop on c8 is passive, right? So you would be very happy. Now, the problem somebody mentioned, if c4, c4 is not so challenging, it's just endgame. Endgame will be okay, like after trade, I think, I, I don't see the problems here, like may, maybe even c5 right away and so on, right? So so that's normal. We don't want this. Also, bishop b4 is coming. Now, he played, he played queen d3. Julem. Julem is like uh, the one who guessed correct, queen d3. Guys, actually very strong move, right? I mean, the, it's it's not like, Huge difference, but the idea, the idea, what about G3? About G3 that you want to avoid with Bishop G2, but you cannot castle after that. So there is a big price. So I don't want to pay the big price for avoiding trade, right? So that's the logic. But Queen D3 is awesome. Queen D3 is awesome. It's, yeah, it's in some sense wasting time, maybe a little bit for the Queen move, but the goal, the goal to avoid the trade is very, very important. You know, guys, it's, it's easy to understand why it we have a space advantage for white, right? Like we'll we'll get and, and we'll build the center with either e4 or c4 for sure, and even already. So when you have a space advantage, you don't you prefer not to trade pieces, right? There is a well-known rule that probably you heard about. So that's why this move queen d3. Uh castle was played, normal. Uh, castle bishop e2. Bishop e2. Uh so black. So it's quite tricky. I think like the right plan, the right plan uh, played by India player, like rookie eight, castle, castle, and he takes his bishop back. I think it's also correct move, bishop f8. Now, what's the idea? Uh, bishop on f3 is already misplaced. And somewhere the pawn is hanging, right? Like, of course, it will be always dangerous to take. Who wins in the game? You will see. Aditi, you will see in, at the end. Bishop f8. Um, so taking the bishop away also if black wants to play c5 one day uh, the better not to have bishop on a3 right uh, so guys now, now I wanted to ask uh, what like, like the natural move why rook a8 was played seems like e5 right so already created the tension in the center now now, I want to, to see if someone is able to find a very strong idea for white after a5. Now, Akash, may, maybe like if you give this move, give me the follow up. So, like your move, bishop b7, what next? Already, guys, I see. I see that you are thinking. What? Uh huh. Kushal. That's a nice answer. That's a nice answer. 
that, that's Akash, that's a very good answer. But now check B should be seven as well. Guys, it's white to move, right? So somebody is sending me black moves. So why to move? Uh, a, lo a lot of different, a lot of different ideas. A lot of different ideas I see here from you guys. Okay, so let's get back to uh, let, let's get back. So let let me just mention two guys, uh, Kushal and uh, there was another player, Akash. Right. So they both noticed something interesting. So guys, what I mean by that? Now, it seems like white should automatically play e4. But, but guys, you, you know, it's always in chess, like, like always worth to check. Yeah, you're right, Julian, you're right. So it's always worth to like push a little bit, like make some effort to see like, oh, well, maybe something else. Like I'm pretty much sure, like even I probably like, to be honest, guys, like if I play quick game, I'll probably just go e4 and that's it, right? Like just looks like a good move and... Now, there is a very interesting idea, actually, Queen e4. Very interesting idea. Oh, Sh Shan Hodip, like, oh, well, he comes with like very interesting idea. Guys, Queen e4. So what is the point of this move? Well, first of all, we prevent e5, e4. We're targeting c6, right? But it's, you know, Queen e4 alone, it's strange, right? We need to see the idea. Now, uh, besides that we, like, we are not worried ed4, but after bishop b7, he renews the idea. Now, uh, I think Akash actually mentioned queen d5. So this is the move to c. Seems like black is quite happy about trade, but not here. Because he actually correctly noticed this nice bishop b5 idea. It's very unpleasant. Very unpleasant pin. So e5 is hanging, bishop c6, another threat. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. I think like white is getting a very clear advantage. Right? So we already, okay, we play queen e4. Uh, queen d5 does not exist, but what after bishop b7? What our queen is doing on a call? Hmm. So somebody mentioned bishop d3. Uh, I, I know uh, I, I know Kushal suggested bishop c4. Guys, the idea is bishop c4, and the question is, would you do you prefer to insert bishop d3 or bishop c4? I kind of like a little bit like more bishop c4. Why? Because I want to keep the square on the five for my queen. If black plays rook e6, well, th then I'm very happy to have bishop c4 with them, right? Dismissed. Now, now, guys, back, queen e4, bishop b7, bishop c4. Now, we take advantage of the fact that black king side is actually not very well protected. By the way, a couple of guys here suggesting rook b5. You know, guys, computer likes this move. It's, it's actually kind of working, but I think it's like why? And well, he's not accepted. So some like mysterious exchange sacrifice. Well, it, after CB5, Queen B7 is strong. But but I think like he plays Queen E4, and then we need to sacrifice again Rook E5. You know, guys, if Bishop C4 leads to clear advantage, I always say like why we need this, uh, you know, complications, right? So we play Bishop C4. The point here, we actually start some initiative, and he, guys, pay attention to the king side. No defenders there. And we already potentially have already three pieces. So queen, right? Queen, two bishops. And he has like 97 maybe around uh, like the king kind of, right? So maybe one defender. So at least we have plus two. And of course, knight will come. And the big point here that after ed4, guys, after ed4, so that's a big question. We have just queen of four with tempo, right? Very beautiful. He has to defend. I think the like, crook of eight is only move or something. And and then we we just it's a favorable transformation, right? We we are happy to get rid of our C3 pawn, and it's just big advantage. I, I don't remember, maybe even like now I noticed, maybe even Queen C7 was winning or something. Seems like interesting move as well, right? Uh but but even CD4, let's say I, I don't want to see Queen C7, what happens there? Uh yes, there is Queen C3, that's a good point, Raj. There is Queen C3, but it's kind of like you, you know, it's easy to understand. It doesn't make a difference. Only the queen is more misplaced. 
doesn't make the difference. So the big threat is queen f5. Big threat, not easy to deal with this threat. And also queen is misplaced on c3. Okay, so that's an interesting opportunity, right? For So basically, instead of playing e4 and playing a normal game, positional game, queen e4, and we create good attacking chances. So that's why uh, in this game, black correctly evaluated this uh, situation and played bishop f8. So he he felt correctly that, like, you, you know, before I play e5, like needs, something needs to be done, right? Uh, maybe queen e2 um, already somewhere in there, it, even though because I have d5 square to escape. So now, now of course, guys, what uh, what about play for white? It seems very logical to play for, right? So the move that everyone wanted to play after a5, so why not here? Uh, e4 and e5. So far, well played. So this is one of the uh, actually uh, complicated positions, I would say, that uh, it's not a bad position for black. Not a bad position for black. It's quite complicated. I like white more, but it's a uh, it's pretty playable position. Now, a lot of tension in the center. Uh, what we are doing here. So here, it's rather very, like starting from here, very, very impressive play. And that's th this is actually the reason why I show you this game. Uh, why to move? I uh, I wouldn't recommend you to to rush because it's it's pretty nuanced play, pretty deep play. Uh, I guys, I'll give you five minutes, five minutes all together. You can send your answer like whenever you want. But guys, let's try one attempt, one attempt. So I don't want someone. Oh well, I'm sending h3. Next time I'm sending a4, and and then I'm like, you know, I'll try to remember you according to the first answer. Uh, well, I'm discussing ideas for black as well, right? So, so far, it's uh, it's pretty decent play for black as well. Although I wouldn't recommend uh, uh, Yahart. As I mentioned in the opening, it's better not to take knight c3 just to play h65. So if you're interested in Cambridge Prince for black, I don't think there is a reason to get into this line with wasting tempo bishop a3. So there was instead of knight a3, there were better options like played much more by grandmasters. So here we have this position. Okay. What to do? Let's see. Rishit, you also get another, uh, like another try, since you sent the answer even before I asked the question. Guys, you, you please try good notation, right? Like somebody sending D four. I need to guess, I kind of understand it's maybe d4, d5, but I'm not sure. Okay, Rudy, okay, got it. That was my guess. Oh. Rajiv, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not sure we are ready for this. I'm not sure. Akash, since I, I don't think people see your answer, I want to ask you. So you, you, you suggest this move, what if black takes on A2? Question number one, obviously. Mm. And can you explain the idea why you played this move? Mm. Abiram, okay. Abiram, but how many answers you sent? I think it's third one. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> how we agreed, one attempt, right? 
guys, one minute to go. One minute to go. Uh, yeah, probably everyone answered already. I don't know. I, I, I got like every possible move in this position. Kushal, can you explain what happens if pawn, pawn is captured on a2? Queen c4. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. Let's go. So, what is bishop d3? Guys, try to have a good notation. Try to have a good notation, guys. Right? Okay, guys. So, one more minute. 30 seconds. I did it. 30 seconds. I mean, we, we still have a lot of uh, moves in this game. Akash, yes, you are good. Oh. So, Aditi, let's go. Send your answer. Okay. Okay, guys. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I got like every, every possible move in this position. Every possible move. Starting from bishop d1 and ending like h4, g4. Guys, I don't think we have any basis for the attack here. He's he's pretty well placed, and it, you you cannot say he has a weak king side, right? Bishop on a fate, normal, like you know, guys. Let's say queen c4. I noticed was popular, but I don't understand like what's the point after bishop b7, right? And and we are getting under b5, so what's the point here, right? I I don't see the idea here. Now I noticed, guys. There have been a lot of like d5, d5 stuff. Both are not very good. Like obviously d5, I mean, maybe one, uh, only one player, of course, like, you know, he takes and then he takes with the queen and it's double attack. You, you know, doesn't make sense. d5 was very popular. Guys, here, basically, we release the tension. But the bigger issue than c5 square, knight c5, we cannot allow it. Just knight c5 comes. You, you have to pay attention what happens if you play d5, right? On the other hand, pawn is hanging. So there is only, uh, like, there are like two guys like who previously answered correct. They mentioned this move, that bishop d2. So what is the point, guys? Uh, I don't think bishop is well placed on g5 because we have always to think about this. So let's say we, maybe we would like to move the knight. H, somebody mentioned knight h4. I think there was knight d2, but then e d4, right? And any time black can play h6, so there is nothing to do there right now. Now, bishop d2 is very nice move. But by the way, objectively speaking, bishop e3 is also okay, even though I like bishop d2 and in the game played bishop d2. So they, they both have similar idea. Now, guys, there, there is this kind of x-ray here, right? Like with so e d4, c d4 tempo. But the bigger the bigger point here. That we indirectly, indirectly defend an A2 pawn. And actually, Akash, I asked him and he told me how. Now, now, and guys, you you need to compare how we protected the pawn with a useful move, right? So in this line, why we protect the pawn? According to Akash, there is this fantastic move. Oh, but by the way, C4 was mentioned a lot. No, C4, I escape. That's no problem for me, guys. C4, I escape. It's queen e3 and queen e7 or queen d6. No problem. And by the way, c4 in this position was mentioned. That, that's, not a, that, that's not a good move, guys. It's, it's again like e d4 and this square is available for black. Not a good move. So, I mean, we're releasing the tension, right? N now, bishop d2 and, and you can do like queen c2, actually a couple of players. Normal move, right? But... You know, we waste time and we allow bishop a6. Why we play queen d3, right? You can do rook b2, but it's wasting time. Now, again, guys, what is the idea here? Bishop d2, queen takes a2, and knight g5. Why knight g5? Because we take control over the square. 
now they are threatening to trap. So it's, uh, it's hard. Plus, we have some ideas to attack F7. I know there is still some funny line here. So he can try, if I remember correctly, he can try something like that. Or, or right away, it's queen h3. No, it's queen. I, I think, no, no, there, there is this. Yeah, queen h3 is winning. I'm sorry, guys. So h6. So we trap the queen, and then now suddenly tactics. Huh. Queen takes, then he takes on d2. Right? So, so there is this trick. Now I see queen, queen e3. Yeah, queen e3 seems winning. Yeah, actually, queen e3 is winning. But I remember there was also the idea that computer suggests to play c4. Bishop takes c4 and then queen f3. No, I, I, I think I'm messing up. It's not here. It's not here. Yeah, it's here. It's here, queen e3. Yeah. The, the queen is still trapped or win on a6. Uh, yeah, I think so. First bishop a6 because queen h3, knight f6. But but the queen is hanging, no? Oh, yes. Yes, I think you are right. Queen h3, there is knight f6. But but rook, ah, rook a1 and this guy is hanging. Here on d2, of course. Yeah, yeah. So that that's, uh, th that's the correct one. That's the correct one. I think here we need to play c4. And now h6. Right, and and then we do rook a one, right? Bishop c four, yeah, exactly. That's the point. Bishop c four, and is it possible that we play queen f three here? Do do we mate after queen f three here? So I mean, queen d two. Queen takes, but f7, right? Okay, guys, it, it's, I think, even... So let me really quickly ask Engine, so what he will say. Let me quickly. So let, let me see. No, this is not so... Yeah, I I'm, I got confused. So it's already, like, not so clear with the advantage or not. So I misplayed something. This, c4, h6. Oh, here, guys, here, knight f7. Knight f7. So that's that's the big point. Yeah, I, I got confused. and And... I, I was interested what is happening. So we have this queen of free check, right? So he cannot take. If he cannot take, that's a problem a little bit, right? Next rook a1 is coming. Yeah, so so that's the winning idea. Yeah, I was already at some point like, oh, what's going on? How we refute this? Yes, guys, anyway, regardless. Uh, so bishop d2, knight g5 works well. I, I mean, you know, we need to check this bishop a6. But to be honest, even if we take like an a6 somewhere, it would be still very good for us, right? But this is like big advantage. So we play bishop d2. We protected the pawn. And uh, probably there is some idea like knight g5 actually should be taken into consideration, right? Knight g5 somewhere attacking ideas. Not surprisingly, uh, not surprisingly, uh, black played h6 here. It uh, seems to me pretty natural. What next, guys? What next? What we are doing here? Akash, can you follow up? Like, you know, you 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 show this move, but then what, what is like follow up, right? Like, I think it's after your move, it's very natural response for black. What next? Okay. Okay, this is something. This is something. Guys, you, you maybe try to follow up. I mean, I see many players addressing one specific move, but then, then I want to see the idea after the most natural response for Black.
<clears throat> okay, Rajiv, so that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Shan I I don't understand. You you it's white to move, not black. Why you give me the idea for black? Guys, let's do one more minute. <clears throat> Rishab, so which one? Like you send the answer and questionable mark. So you ask me or, or you said this move is bad. <laughs> like why you send with a questionable mark? I want to see your answer, right? Julem, okay, that's excellent answer. Very detailed. Aditi, okay. So you 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 even gave the previous moves. That uh, this is remarkable. <laughs> Why you give the previous move? What was played? That's interesting. Rishab, what is DC five? DTC five. What does it mean? What is this move? DTC five. Ah, E five. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, guys. So interesting moment. What is surprising? Guys, what is surprising? Uh, Shank deep. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, but, but what queen escapes? So, guys, I don't think, again, guys, I don't think we are ready, like some people like g4, knight h4. I don't think we are ready. Guys, he's pretty safe on the king side, right? Now, what is interesting, in the beginning, it was like a great start. Like, there were like four or five answers correct with, with, with the Akash giving me like the idea, basic the, the idea. Uh, but but then uh, I was waiting more and more, and there were more coming the moves that are not good. Like, guys, but here is the point, right? So, first of all, I think eventually C4 was the majority. Like C4 won, even though there was a good start with the like right move, which is Queen C4. Guys, the problem it's again. We keep the tension. C4, yes, it's tempting. Yes, you need to check. Maybe you trap the queen, but you, you're not. Because I have queen A3. And after rook B3, I can go, let's say, here. So what happened? We weaken the square. And now whatever happens, right, whether you keep it or you take on A5 or you play D5, I will get nice. Right? Right? So that's the problem with C4. I mean, guys, important to check. Maybe somewhere it works. Somewhere you trap the queen, but also to know to reject, right? Now, okay, D, guys, D5, we know knight C5. We don't want this. D5, what D5? Knight E5 only helps black. Knight E5, queen E5. So we kind of like a little bit with damage pawn structure. He saves, uh, he takes the queen away from dangerous square. Black is perfectly fine, if not better, right? Now, guys, the solution is queen c4. But I was kind of like insisting, even those who responded with queen c4, uh, to, to mention second move. Because let's say you see queen c4, right? Of, well, c6 is hanging. Of course, b should be set. Now what? Like black can say, oh, I won't be fine, right? So the follow-up is very important. The follow-up is a4. Stops b5. Also kind of like temporary seals the queen on a5, right? So he can save the queen. He can take on d4. But this is the trade, at least in this position, that we are happy with, right? We got a strong center. So that's the strategy. That's the strategy. Now, uh, th there was uh, someone mentioned queen c2, which is a very decent move. The problem, once again, guys, not to forget why we have queen in d3. We prevented bishop a6, right? Uh, so back, bishop b7, a4. Was a4 possible without queen c4? 
Uh, okay, the question is, what's the idea? Like, I after queen a4, rook a1, queen b3. I have a6 square available now, right? Not to forget. I think I'm escaping. Yeah, it's still kind of like dangerous position for the queen. I, I understand this, but uh, maybe d5. d5, but it's like cd5, right? No, cd5. Uh, yeah, I think I, how I escape here, like knight c5. Yeah, well, knight, knight c5, and then I'll, I'll get c2 square available. No, no, guys, I I don't think there is like any big initiative here, like queen e6, when queen escape d5. What, what is here? Like, nothing special, like I just put here, right? Where is our pawn? Where is our c5 square? <laughs> right? So, guys, I know it's tempting. It's tempting to hunt the, like after the queen, but Mm, it's not working. And meanwhile, we keep all the tension. We keep all the ideas. So he has to deal with, like, uh, you know, potential threat to the queen still. Now, this happened. And, and guys, it's, uh, you know, white is doing pretty okay. White is doing pretty okay. Like, probably, uh, I would say white is better. And now, when Akash uh, mentioned this idea, he even mentioned the best move for black, a6 followed by b5. And, and I think like even rook a1 is a very good move for, for white. Uh, white would be better, but you know, guys, it's it's shockingly, shockingly, this move, which is very natural move, right? Like no big threat to the queen, uh, rook d8. So this move appears to be, I wouldn't say decisive mistake, but I can say that white is clearly better after this move. Like the, it's, it's a6 for sure better. Now, Okay, so here is an interesting question, guys. Uh, we have to do it very quick. It's, uh, you know, only six minutes left. L let's do three minutes, maybe, and uh, because I want to wrap up this game for sure. Boris, we also need to have some time for the questions. Yeah, but, but is it okay we go like extra five minutes after that? Yeah, probably, okay. Yeah, well, I don't know about schedule. Maybe you'll start something else. Um, guys, I, I will commend. So bishop d1, there is bishop a6. Uh, Kushal recommends knight g5. Great tactical vision. I don't think it's working, guys. Knight g5, I take, and then I have rook e6 defense. Bishop h5, rook e6, Kushal. So that's the problem. But it's nice tactical vision to see this idea. Bishop g5, mm, I don't think, again, like it's probably take rook e7, something like I don't think it's worth. So, guys, we have already two guys who responded very nicely here. Knight h4 with idea bishop h5, knight f5, but uh, ed4, we cannot recapture cd4, right? Shank deep, uh, like, yeah. Now, you know, it's it's a, such a subtle move, but like, it's amazing. I, I put this position like a puzzle. Guys, rookie one. Amazing. So we keep the tension. We keep the tension and this is super useful move. Rookie one, I, I check this position. It's it's like massive advantage of this. Now what happened? So we keep the tension, we protect, like it's a useful move. Also, like the pawn is protected in some cases, right? So I, I consider this like the, the most uh the most impressive move in this game. Just rookie one. Now, guys, no one is mentioned actually. We already can really target this queen. So there is, for instance, this move with idea c4. It's kind of like everything is ready. Right, everything is ready. So your next move c4, basically he's forced to play d4, guys. P forced to play, then we take, and only square available queen h5. It seems like he gave up in the center, and we got a very nice center. But he's well placed. The pawn is hanging, and I know that he starts some like very concrete counterplay according to computer, like c5. Very powerful. We play d5. Would be nice pawn structure. Comes f5. So we we kind of like not. He's well prepared and his pieces are well mobilized, right? Now, kind of like when we play rookie one, we getting ready for this. We getting ready for this. If he takes ed4, cd4 plays queen h5, 
now we have more options we can do e5 even bishop d1 is a very nice move even bishop d1 so like in general he releases the tension we obtain the center it's like clear advantage for us right just there was something specific that was a counterpoint Right, so so that's a big advantage. Now he didn't go for this. He didn't go for this. Should have played. He decided, okay, I'll go c5. I'll go c5 in this position. Now one minute. Why to move? Uh, g4. I I don't think like we are ready for g4. I don't think we are ready. It's like g4, g5. We'll play like h. Unnecessary. Bishop g5. What is about this bishop g5? Well, Julian, like I can do rook c8 in worst case. What is about this bishop g5? To try uh, what what happens? Oh, some some new player we have, Lila La Judge, uh, came up with a <coughs> very strong answer. Guys, in fact, <coughs> in fact, we in in this position, the most like you know simple in some sense primitive move rook b5 queen e6. This move good enough for big advantage. Good enough for big advantage because of the queen. You know, then we slowly go queen b3, c4, if necessary. If I, I'm not saying we are threatening the queen, but at least we'll ruin the pawn structure and everything. Uh, rook b5, queen b6, queen b3. I think there is bishop c6 there. Uh, guys, but th there are a few players who mentioned like I I like this move. Just like it's remarkable, you know, all the tension is kept. He cannot take on d4 because we take the pawn. Now we protected the pawn. And if you check with computer this position, it's plus three for white. Can you imagine this plus three? So he he cannot move. And we have all the threats, like for instance, queen b3. I think he's about to lose the material. So it's probably like if you see the lines, but it, it's like kind of like very, very, but like plus three. Can you imagine three pawns? Uh, bishop d3, maybe, but no reason to have bishop on d3. It, plus three, it's like, yes, Kushal, it's literally like piece up. It's in, but d5 is pretty close. Now, the guy actually, guys, so so we'll finish here because, well, that's the conclusion, right? Bishop up one or d5, winning position. Now, I know we a little bit left this place, but it's all about queen here, right? So our ideas could be free and so on. So this guy is kind of like very tactical. So instead, he went for queen b3, uh, sacrificed the pawn, and went for some crazy attack after bishop c4. He won a very nice game. I'll upload this game in the file, and you will get this PGN, right? But at some point, it was, I wouldn't say it's, it was not clear, but it was already not such a big advantage if, if black would play correct. I thought, like, why to risk? Why to risk this when you have, like, bishop of one move or d5 with massive, massive positional advantage? Now, the, objectively, this is also pretty good, but not, not as strong as bishop f1 and d5. Nevertheless, game ended with like very nice win, like beautiful combination at the end. I'll upload this game and you will see it, right? Uh, in PGN5. So, uh, Adriana, if you have time, maybe like, you know, uh, four minutes for like. Yeah, a bit time. Uh, Boris, we already have a question uh, from John. What are you going to teach in next session on defense, uh, Jam Thinking, part three? Well, what, what we are going to uh, we, we are going to to see some defensive ideas uh, like I, I don't want to reveal guys so we, we we will talk about defense like how how to defend what are the rules and stuff like this right mm -hmm. uh, okay and also the question from Lisa from London uh, why don't you do some sessions on end game as well oh well it uh, end game will have in uh, April. Right. Oh, March. I'm sorry. So next month, uh, there are four more topics, and we'll talk about uh, end games as well. And by the way, Lisa, I have a, a new chessable course which was uh, published probably three weeks ago, about three weeks ago, which calls Russian Endgame Technique. So if you're interested, you can check it there. Mm -hmm. And other question is on chat box, uh, as you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which, uh, so I'll start. So there are like two similar questions. Which books are good for classic study? Which chess books made the biggest impact on you as a chess player? 
Oh, that's a, that's not an easy question. Not an easy question. I, I mean, the reason for that, it's hard to say about impact. Uh, how do I feel? But it's it just with my dad, who was a chess player. We we covered so many books, Russian books. It was uh, we we had a huge library, and uh, I don't know. You you know, guys, there there is like uh, the 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 famous middle game book about. Uh, <clears throat> about the tournament like famous candidates tournament in zurich 1953 that's considered to be pretty pretty good book to be honest like i i, I don't remember much about this book but i remember it's always it was always uh, on the first place for me so that, uh, that that that's the book guys to be honest it's like so personal right it's so personal i i even i remember my system the book which uh like there, there was pretty like that there was a lot of impact from this book, but I wouldn't recommend this. It's just, you, you know, I, I know some players might give up on chess after reading this like 500 pages of pretty boring stuff. But I, I thought like I remember for me, it was personally interesting There there was guys, there was some, you, you know, I can tell you, but it's irrelevant for you because I don't think it's translated. We, we had like Russian books, uh, uh, very good, serious like there were small books, maybe 100 pages on different topics. I still remember how like one of the books I covered, like, you know, isolated pawn, cast but pawn structure, and I still follow the rules. You know, uh, so, so there were like, it's a lot of books and it's very personal. Like somebody might, just, you know, go and, and study best games of Karpov and say, wow, right? Or, or Petros. So it's hard to say, right? But there are many, many books. Uh, yeah, players, yeah. 1400 rated. Uh, then these sessions are really too advanced to put in practical play. Boris, it's time to end up the session. Okay, so, okay, sure, yeah. sure, Andrew. We, yeah. we I know, guys, you have. Year. We will see you next week at the same time. And for yeah. the all subscribers, uh, don't forget to register for our upcoming live camps on notre.com. And as a last, stay safe and thank you for joining. Thank you very much for moderating, Andrew. Bye bye. Bye bye, guys. Goodbye.